So we are now going to finish off the proof of the uh, parts of this theorem we're actually proving, so 1 and 3, that a compact matrix group contains a non-trivial maximal torus. And what we've established so far is that a compact matrix group contains a non-trivial torus, if it's a non-trivial group. So we proved this by finding an abelian subgroup which was compact and proving then that any compact abelian path connected group is a torus. What we now need to show is that any torus is contained in a maximal torus. Let me get a new page. Okay, so this is what we're trying to prove now. Any torus in a compact group is contained in a maximal torus. Well, suppose not. Suppose we have um, a torus that's not contained in a maximal torus. Suppose we have T1 uh, not contained in a maximal torus. Well, it has to be contained in some slightly bigger torus. And this is a strict inclusion, as in T2 has to be strictly bigger than T1, um, because otherwise T1 would be a maximal torus itself, right? So maximality means you're not contained in any bigger torus. So if you're a torus but you're not maximal, there's a bigger torus that contains you. Okay, but it's not contained in a maximal torus, so T2 is also not a maximal torus. Therefore, it's contained in a strictly bigger torus, T3 which is a torus but it's not a maximal torus so it's contained in a torus t4 and i can go on and i can go on indefinitely and construct an infinite sequence of tori all containing one another okay so what i'm going to do is again pass the levels of the algebras uh, so let's call the algebra of t1 little t1 the algebra of t2 is little t2 and again, we have an inclusion of Lie algebra of T1 sitting inside Lie algebra of T2, etc. But now these are subspaces. They're all subspaces of little g, which is a finite dimensional vector space. So this sequence of uh, Lie algebras has to stabilize at some point. In other words, um, for some uh, k, well, let's say for some capital N, T k plus N is isomorphic to T N, little, little t k plus N is isomorphic to little t N for all k, bigger than zero. All right, so this sequence of subspaces stabilizes but we saw earlier in one of the proofs, where was it? Um, it was here, that uh, an abelian matrix group is X of its Lie algebra. So that's telling us that, um, you know, T K plus N equals X of little T K plus N. And this is equal to exp of little t n, which is equal to big T n for all k bigger than or equal to zero. And that's an equality, not a strict inclusion. So this is a contradiction, right? We're supposed to have this sequence of tori that we're getting strictly bigger each time. The Lie algebras have to stabilize at some point, and that means the tori have to stabilize at some point. So it's a proof by contradiction. Uh, perhaps you can get away with uh, phrasing it in a more constructive way, but this shows that any torus in a compact group is contained in a maximal torus. Okay, so this completes the proof that any compact group contains a non-trivial maximal torus. So how are we going to use this? Well, um, if we have a representation, let's say given a representation R from G to GLV, smooth complex representation, um, we'll get a 
representation of the maximal torus inside G just by restricting and you know because T is isomorphic to U1 to the N this uh, will give us a splitting of V into weight spaces W lambda um, so let me just introduce some notation let's call the inclusion map from T into G little t um, in other words I'm thinking of T of e to the i 1 theta up to e to the i uh, sorry e to the i theta 1 up to e to the i theta n as the kind of maximal torus inside G so what is W lambda? W lambda is the set of vectors V in V such that R of t e to the i theta 1 up to e to the i theta n v equals e to the i lambda 1 theta 1 plus dot 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 plus lambda n theta n v where lambda is a vector of integers lambda 1 up to lambda n so you can see the bigger our torus the larger n is and the more integers we have to split up our space v into weight spaces that's why we're interested in the maximal torus i just want to make one last remark before we move on which is there's another way of thinking about lambda what is lambda lambda we can think of it as an element of z to the n but there's a more invariant way of thinking about lambda so where does lambda live? A lambda is really a function of the thetas, theta one up to theta n. It's the theta, it's the function lambda of theta equals lambda one theta one plus dot 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 plus lambda n theta n. So it's actually a linear function of the thetas, and the thetas are coordinates on well, not quite the Lie algebra of T, but on. Uh, so the Lie algebra of T would be, the, the coordinates would be i theta 1 up to i theta n. So the thetas are actually coordinates on i times the Lie algebra of T. So theta 1 up to theta n are coordinates on, I'm going to say, i times uh, the Lie algebra of T. So I'm thinking about this just sort of formally living inside the Lie algebra of T complexified, right? So remember, if I have a Lie algebra, I can just take complex linear combinations of its elements and I get the complexified Lie algebra. So I'm just thinking about sort of imaginary axis inside that complexification, the imaginary subspace. So really, lambda lives in the dual of the space I times the Lie algebra of the maximal torus. Right, the dual space, remember, is the space of linear functions on a vector space, and the vector space in question is i times the Lie algebra of the maximal torus. Okay, so this is a more invariant way of thinking about where our weights live, um, and we'll come back to this when we talk about the killing form.